Hey nerds and nerdettes, it is Darth. We're back in Queen's Blade Limit Break, and today we're going to be taking a look, another look at a warrior that has only been released once. Uh, she's making a re-return, and I'm talking about Break Attribute SP Warrior Nanel. We're going to take another look at her, so I'm calling them uh, like a re, a re-look or a re-review. A re-overview because I don't really review everything when it comes to gearing and stuff like that about a warrior. But I wanted to do that because it's time to spill the beans. What do I mean by that? I'll, I'll let you know here in just a second. But first I want to apologize about the last video I uploaded. It was the same video going over Break Attribute, SP, Warrior, Nanel. But I forgot to turn the audio on. <laughs> I was switching out some audio stuff around between my PlayStation and my computer, and apparently I forgot to re-enable sounding, and I lost it all. So, I had to take the video down, and I'm just now getting back to re-reviewing it. Anyways, why am I doing a re-review? Well, I do this from time to time, even though I've probably only done it once or twice. Uh, when a warrior is worthy of a re-review, at least for now, and I should be doing this more often as I get to know the warriors a bit more, as I have mentioned in many of my other videos, I try to take all warriors up to 10 or 11 and then play around with them in different scenarios. But as a at the beginning of the video, I said it's time to spill the beans. And what I mean by that is it's time to let you know who I'm using to put up big damage numbers in these monster takedown and event boss fights. And she is it. I want you to take a look at something before we really start talking about her, and this is not a flex, this is just where I'm at with her right now. 323 million damage. Yes, and I'm probably going to regret making this video because G123 has a tendency to nerf things after I make a video. 323 million compared to some of the others. Now, let's go in and take a look at her because you don't have much time to pull for this warrior. This is her second run through. You don't have much time left, maybe a day or two uh, left to pull for her, but it depends on what I'm about to tell you. So let's just re-go over her skills really quick. On her passive, she gets a standard attack and HP buff, but she gets a crit rate plus 20%. She's a DP she's a mage, she's a DPS. When battle starts, damage resists plus 60%. That's a flat 60% damage reduction. So she may not get a shield like some of the uh, other warriors at the start of battle, but she's getting 60% damage reduction. But it reduces the last six turns. That's actually pretty good because she's a ramp up warrior. You're going to find out what I mean by that in just a second. But as the turns go on, she decreases her damage resist by 10%. It's actually a quite handy ability. We're going to kind of skip around before we get to the bread and butter ability. I want to touch on uh, the last uh, ability here, Wings of Reproach. When an enemy takes an action, she inflicts 50% magic damage, which ignores defense. Activates once per turn. Now, that's a bit misleading. She activates once per enemy per turn. So she can count, she can kind of... When an enemy takes, it's not a counterattack necessarily because she's not the one being attacked, but it's like a follow-up and a counterattack all in one. So anytime an enemy takes an action once per turn, she's going to hit you with a 50% magic damage that ignores defense. It's actually quite powerful as time goes on. Now, let's go into Blessing of Light. When an ally takes an action, including follow-up, barrage, counter, you acquire Star Glow. Star Glow is her ramp-up ability that buffs her as she goes up. If you notice here, attack up, damage resist, and growth. That should be power up, because growth is a little bit of an understatement here. When an ally takes an action, so any ally who takes an ally who takes an action and attacks, including counters and follow-ups, she's going to gain Star Glow. Star Glow basically increases her attack by 3%, can't be removed, and stacks up to 60 times, which means you can get this up to 60, which is very potent. So she's a ramp-up warrior. That's what I mean by that. However, when you hit 30 Star Glows, you recover 50% of your max HP once. Okay, big deal, but it's actually quite potent. When you reach 60 Star Glows, you remove all debuffs, recover all HP, and grant Immobilize Resist until battle ends. This is actually pretty powerful, but you have to get to 60 Star Glows uh, to begin with. Now, that's not, a, that's not it. Now, let's get to the bread and butter. 
deals a hundred her main ability here deals 120 percent magic damage and you might be thinking to yourself no big deal she's a standard mage actually a little bit weaker than most mages out there that's not true she does magic damage to all enemies however when attacking if the if she has 15 star glow she deals an additional 80 percent magic damage and she's going to restore hp equal to 100 percent of her attack every time she uses this ability okay now we're not done with this ability yet okay uh, restores it if a tar if she has 30 star glows remember we just saw 30 over here she has an 80 percent chance to inflict seal as well seal makes it so that the enemy cannot deal crit damage and passive skills don't trigger which is extremely powerful she has the best chance of inflicting seal of any warrior assuming you can get to 30 star glows and you can for long-term fights if you have 45 star glows this skill does not go on cooldown meaning you will no longer be attacking with a normal attack this is where she becomes very very powerful at 45 star glows if the if she has 60 star glows though she's going to deal an additional 100 percent magic damage ignoring defense so she's doing 120 she's doing 80 and yes this stacks by the way and she does 100 percent additional damage that ignores defense and she's doing this 50 percent magic damage that ignores defense as well now keep in mind she's also powering herself up at 60 times 3 percent her attack goes up so at max star glows she's recovering hp like crazy and doing massive amounts of damage assuming you can get her to 60 star glow so she's a very very potent warrior that i have been using as you can see to get these high numbers now who am i using though to buff her up well there's a lot of warriors who attack and counter attack in the game now there are some notables that i like here be Alyssa. not everybody's going to have be Alyssa, so put your spicy pirate in here okay make sure that your spicy pirate's getting hit because that's the only time she does a follow-up the hair the hair i need to do a second review on because they updated her and she is a burn stacking master she's very very good at both short term but extremely exceptional at long term fights because she counter attacks or she follow up attacks every time an ally takes an action and it she can do that for several time for several times per attack so be Alyssa attacks every time an ally takes an action the hair attacks also every time somebody takes an action and include and she plays off of be Alyssa that way now the hair can only attack so many times though now that makes her extremely powerful at stacking those burns but because of the synergy between spicy pirate be Alyssa and the hair you're able to stack star glows extremely fast on B Nanel getting her to 60 star glows to where she's doing these massive massive damage attacks that are that's ignoring defense and if you don't know anything about the event bosses, including Monster Takedown, they stack defense and attack and HP and things like that as the fight goes on. They get much, much more durable as you stack damage. Now, if you don't have the hair, pick her up next time you get her. Pair her with Nanel. If you don't have Bealissa, use Spicy Pirate. Uh, I use Vesper here because she does really, really good damage. I talked about San the Sankara here. She has an 80% chance to just automatically dispel immobilization effect. Uh, she's actually better than Vesper, but she doesn't do as much damage as Vesper, so I use Vesper. Uh, outside of that, B Nanel is the one that's doing all the damage. So what's the point here? She's very, very good in PvP. A lot of people are using her for the damage resist and getting those star glows up. You are capable of doing it however i think she shines more so on those monster takedown actually in any event boss as well i think i hit number three not my drop down to number four but i have powered up nanel a bit since so i should be able to take the number three spot again uh, last time i took number one finally in the monster takedowns in guild and number two on the spider queen because somebody came in and, and beat me pretty hardly so what i'm trying to say here is don't pass up on nanel if you can you only have about a day or two left 
Actually, let's go in and see. This is how I can tell. On the arrival, when you go to multiply your items, as long as you have another one here before reset, you have another day. So you have today and tomorrow to pull for her, if you are going to pull for her. Now, where she shines is at least getting her up to 10 star. Now, I am going to say, because a lot of people have a tendency to say, well, I'm not putting up the kind of numbers that you are. Well, no, you're not going to, because I got her geared out with artifact gear, okay? Not only that, but under the gallery, under the Link Warriors, I have her and where is it at here? Oh, I went on ahead and took these two warriors up to 12 star to get a 30% damage bonus. I have all my story mode bonuses and stuff like that, so I'm doing a lot more damage than you might. That's not the point here of me being buffed up and having my spicy poses up to four now isn't what I'm trying to get across. You will notice a massive, massive damage difference just by putting her on your team when it comes to monster takedown and event bosses. That's the point. I think she's well worth the time, especially if you are focused on PvE encounters like guild boss battles, monster takedown, and event bosses. Well, that's it guys. Let me know what you guys think of the re-review and the reveal of who I am finally using now to put up really, really good numbers, and I hope nobody is upset with me for letting the secret out of the bag. A lot of us like to try to keep that to ourselves sometimes, but I really just don't care anymore. Let me know if you have her, guys. Let me know if you're using her and what you're seeing. Maybe you've been using her with the wrong team, so you just don't notice the damage potential ramp up there. And if you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section, guys. And until next time, see you later.